Imagine being told you have cancer. I suspect some of you have already faced this. In my 20 years as an oncologist, I've had to share this news with my patients countless times. And it doesn't get easier, nor should it. Every cancer is different, but our reaction to cancer is usually the same. It's fear. In fact, we're so afraid of it, we sometimes can't even say it, and we call it the C word. Why wouldn't it be fearful? Cancer is scary, and we live in a popular culture that perpetuates this fear. Think of all the tear-jerking movies where cancer is the ultimate enemy. We use the kind of military metaphors with cancer that you rarely see with other illnesses. The war on cancer. The cancer battle. He's a cancer fighter. Or she lost her battle with cancer. Now, sometimes our reaction to fear may be denial. So some of you may be thinking, cancer, that won't happen to me. As things currently stand, odds are that each and every one of us can expect to come face to face with the words, you have cancer, told either to ourselves or a close loved one. Current cancer statistics estimate that almost one in two people will be diagnosed with a cancer over their lifetime. One in two. Charlotte was 48 years old when she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And one of the things she kept repeating as she sat across from me is, why me? It's not fair. It's true. Cancer isn't fair. Yes, lifestyle choices and family history can influence our risk of cancer, but that doesn't tell the whole story. In a Johns Hopkins study, researchers found that many cancers may occur from seemingly random mutations that may either turn on a cancer-promoting gene or turn off a cancer-suppressing gene. The fault lies in our genes. In his Pulitzer Prize-winning book, The Emperor of All Maladies, Dr. Siddharth Mukherjee writes, cancer is a flaw in our growth. But this flaw is deeply entrenched in ourselves." End quote. Cancer isn't a foreign enemy. It comes from us, from our DNA. So let's accept, then, that we likely will come face to face with the C word, and our reaction will include fear. And that's understandable. That's the hard news. Now, I'd like to share with you some hopeful news. I believe that we, as individuals, each and every one of us, have the power to exercise our agency and change our narrative of cancer. Let's flip the script on this C word. My prescription for you today is to leverage three other C words that will shift your thinking on cancer. Control curiosity, and courage. Control, and I mean, let's take control of what's in our control. We know that early detection is our best chance of curing cancer. Yet many times, action isn't taken until it's too late. When I see a patient for the first time, there are things I can say to them, and some things I can't. One of the things I say in my head sometimes is, I wish I had seen you earlier. I can't say it because we can't turn back time. The reality is that for many cancers, if we wait until we have obvious symptoms, it may be too late. Fortunately, for many cancers, we have the ability to detect them early through cancer screening, but we need to take control and get screened. Take colorectal cancer, for example. 
It's the third most common cancer, and many studies have shown that screening can detect cancers early, and screening saves lives. Yet, only about 60% of people eligible for screening are getting screened. Why? Why are almost half of us not doing this? Now, I can understand that collecting your stool or getting a colonoscopy may not be your idea of a fun time. <laughs> I get it. But usually, that's not the real reason. Often, it's because at some level, we believe, we hope, cancer won't happen to me. Maybe if I don't look, it won't be there. My own parents were already well into their 60s before I could convince them to get a colonoscopy. And when nothing else worked, I had to invoke the embarrassment it would cause their daughter, the cancer specialist, if they were ever diagnosed with a cancer and someone found out they'd never been screened. <laughs> the guilt worked. But it shouldn't come to that. We all can take greater personal control. That includes adopting strategies that can reduce our risk of cancer. Enjoy a healthy diet. Do not smoke. Be sun smart. Get as much exercise as you can. And yes, talk to your doctor and get screened. C for curiosity. Be curious. What does that mean? Well, if the fault lies in our genes, then let's understand our genes. Do you know your family history? If not, find out if there's an inherited risk of cancer and share that with your doctor. And if you or a loved one is facing a diagnosis of cancer, try not to agonize over the why me. Trust me, it's not a productive use of your valuable time. We need to focus your energy on what lies ahead. Be curious. Ask questions, lots of questions. Learn what you can about your cancer and the treatments that may be available, and be an active part of your cancer team. If it can't be you, find someone in your circle of trust to be that advocate for you. My patients have taught me that an informed patient is an empowered patient. And C for courage. Sir Winston Churchill once famously said, fear is a reaction, courage is a decision. This is another lesson my patients teach me every day. Courage means strength, often in the face of uncertainty and pain. And courage means trust, trust in the science. As a researcher, I can tell you the global cancer community is making advances at an unprecedented pace. We're interrogating cancers at a molecular level, down to their DNA, and using that information to apply treatments with greater precision. For some cancers, we can even harness the power of our own immunity with immunotherapies, medicines that can unmask the cancer and make it vulnerable to our army of immune cells. I know, it's very exciting. We have a long way to go, but I have great hope for what lies ahead. Trust in science. At the same time, have the courage to differentiate science from pseudoscience. If it sounds too good to be true, take a gut check, and please think again. Acting with courage also means asking the difficult questions. What are the goals of my treatment? And what if this treatment doesn't work? When I first met Eric, he had been diagnosed with a stage four cancer. His treatments included surgeries, radiation, many rounds of chemotherapy, and he even participated in an experimental trial. Eric surpassed our initial guarded expectations 
and went on to live with his cancer for over six years. But his cancer was now inevitably progressing. He came in to see me with his usual expectant look of, OK, what's next? Knowing our options are limited, we began talking about a treatment that had many possible side effects, but only a small chance for benefit. Eric was quiet. I asked him what he was hoping for. He put time with family first. And then he said, Dr. Gill, I love to karaoke. OK, I said, not quite expecting that. He went on to say, I want to be able to enjoy that with my family for as long as I have. I don't want to risk that for a treatment that's going to make me feel pretty sick and may not even help. We talked some more and together decided to transition to a plan that focused on managing symptoms and palliative care, and we talked about dying. That took great courage. I had a video call with Eric a few weeks before he died, and he said it was really hard to accept that he was coming to the end of his journey, but he was grateful to be able to choose how his story ended. Cancer is hard, but we need to shed this outdated baggage and stigma. Now's the time to flip the script on that C word. Let's shift our thinking from denial to realization, from why me to what can I do, and from fear to empowerment. How can you do that? Take control. Be curious. Have courage. Thank you.